as we come out from the COVID uh, situation and, and as markets start uh, flexing and, and opening up, I think what's going to be important, as I said earlier on as well, is one with speed to market and, and being able to transform and, and continue to transform uh, to a true digital uh, uh, technology environment, mm. uh, but also focus on flexibility as well. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Ngati CX. I'm your host, Aish, and today we have a global technology executive with us on the show. But before I introduce you to our guest, allow me to introduce you to the magic of Ngati. Ngati is the world's leading multilingual no-code chatbot platform, available across 14 channels with over 35,000 bots, created across 100, 186 countries in every domain and use case. Ngati has also been recognized as a top platform by Inc.com, TechWorld, CIO, and many others. We run the Ngati blog, video channel, and the Ngati CX podcast, receiving upwards of 400,000 visitors annually. And now for our guest. Carl Chinoy is the, is the Managing Director of Tech Ahura. He leads the development of IT strategy and guides multiple clients through their technological transformation in the era of the highly connected, fast-paced economies. With his experience of many years as a CIO, he advises clients from Fortune 500 companies on reorganization and how to drive, and how to drive operational transformation. He also focuses on building an organization that is collaborative, collaborative and flat while driving results and accountability. He's worked in a variety of industries like gaming, financial services, fintech, retail, retail and consumer business with the mindset of using technology as an enabler to drive organizational growth and operational excellence. So welcome to the show, Carl. We're thrilled to have you. Hey, good morning. Thank you very much, Aish, uh, for having me on this call. Before I dive into our interview with Carl, don't forget to subscribe to Ngati and tap the bell icon to get access to exclusive content from thought leaders from around the globe. So let's start with, our, with my first question. What do you define as a global digital workforce and what's the best strategy for creating one? Good question. Um, well, uh, I, I, think, I think what I'm gonna focus on is throughout this uh, conversation is customer experience and uh, a consistent customer experience, which is provided by an organization through any kind of workforce, which has a consistent uh, process, consistent technology use, uh, a consistent experience for the customer, and most importantly, uh, making sure that the environment is in a secured uh, and, and compliant kind of an environment. So when we talk about a global digital workforce, an organization which can provide a consistent service to any of the customers and, and, and exceed their expectations on a continuous basis, utilizing uh, the workforce which could be existing in any part of the globe at, uh, with, uh, with time zone differences, with cultural differences, there's regulatory and compliance requirements, which could be different in various different locations. But the experience that the customer receives, irrespective of where the services are provided and how the services are provided, it's always consistent. Yes. So take, for example, if you look at various uh, parts of the globe where there are significant cultural differences, um, and, uh, and, the, and what could be important in one part of the world uh, may not necessarily be perceived as an important aspect to a customer uh, in different parts of the world. And, and it doesn't matter where the services are provided uh, through a digital medium, uh, the customer receives the same kind of experience. The customer is, is satisfied uh, their, their uh, kind of challenges are, are understood and reviewed by the, the individual who is actually providing those services, irrespective of where the, where the process uh, maturity could be. So there, within the globe, there are various maturity levels within the organization as well. So some processes could be uh, provided through one part of the globe, uh, which could be more matured. But the customer should not uh, be exposed to those kind of inefficiencies within the, within the system. So making sure uh, that the organization provides these kind of services through uh, mechanics 
and, and uh, infrastructure, uh, the, uh, the business processes that individuals are following within the organization. If you, if you look at today's uh, uh, global environment, um, education level, infrastructure, systems and computers, cloud computing, which is available throughout the globe as compared to just in certain parts of the globe. So I think there, this is, it's a very flat uh, environment in today's day and age. And then, so it's important that we continue on to provide these kind of services and make sure that, uh, that the customer gets the kind of experience uh, and, and, and the benefits that we are trying to provide to the customer is consistent. And, 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 and it's an it's a even playing field. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's kind of like, um, for example, like a Starbucks. I mean, it's expanding globally, but the experience kind of stays the same with a few, with a little touch of localization, like the decor, for example. While the brand identity is intact, you can still see that there's a little bit of that local flair in it. It, th that's that's a that's a very important point that that one say for example Starbucks or McDonald's or any of these uh, global brands um, they have consistency in in the way their stores are and the way the customer perceives the um, uh, the organization and, and the kind of products that the customer receives as well is consistent throughout the globe but also what is important is when you talk about digital interaction with the customer. Um, so any kind of ordering process, which is through some kind of technology and mechanics, is also consistent whether you get the, whether you get the product in, in China, whether you get the product and, and the services in, in the U.S., or you get the products and services in, in any parts of uh, sub-Saharan Africa as well. So I think having a digital global workforce where, where the environment is flattened and it's consistent throughout. Uh, now, now, you do want to understand and be empathetic towards the cultural differences. Mm. So, so certain products which are sold in China, say, for example, a McDonald's selling uh, certain products only in, in Asia or in India specifically, um, those kind of cultural differences can exist within a global workforce. Or, uh, but but, the, but the, what is also important is that the consistency of quality is maintained, the consist consistency in services are maintained, and that is something which is critical. Mm -hmm. and, and especially when the technology is involved with the business process and the customer interaction, uh, those kind of things is, is critical to have a very matured uh, uh, digital workforce. Definitely. I think that discrepancy is more apparent when um, one part of the world has introduced a certain type of technology, whereas the same franchise in, in another part of the world hasn't quite yet. So for example, I'm from Toronto. So um, they have the Starbucks app over there and you can order online and it's completely contactless. But over here, um, they started incorporating that very recently, but that discrepancy was very, like, it kind of stood out to me. I was just like, oh, this isn't there. So you know what I mean? And uh, it, those kind of, and, I'm not suggesting in any way that um, because you move from one part of the globe to another part of the globe, everything needs to be uniform. So, so one of the things that I always also talk about is uh, uh, think globally, but operate locally. Yes. And that is something which, is, which I know we are going to be discussing uh, eventually as well. But that is, it's okay to have the differences and it's okay to have the, uh, the cultural barriers. Mm -hmm. or levels of maturity could be different in various parts of the world. That's okay. But you know, at the end of the day, the organization is working for the customer and, and making sure that the customer is satisfied, uh, uh, the organization bending over backwards to, to ensure the customer is satisfied, to ensure that the quality of the product is maintained. Now, those are the important things. And, and as the organization provides those kind of tools and technology to the workforce, and, and make sure that every individual, uh, who, which in, in whatever kind of interaction that they are gonna have with the, with the customer, has the same kind of tools, same kinds of processes, whether they automate it, whether they are not, it doesn't matter, but the interaction and the experience is kind of, kind of maintained. Yes, this is very true. Yeah, like I said, the discrepancy was there, 
but it still felt like the same, like it's still, the same warmth was still exuded. So, um, which does remind me. So tell us about the, um, about the think globally, operate lo locally strategy. Uh, how can it, how can it drive transformations in IT and operations? So I'll give you, I'll give you a small example of, of uh, my experience. Uh, um, many years back, uh, I, was, uh, I was opening up the Ernst & Young facility in, uh, in India. Mm -hmm. uh, this was way in the, in the mid to late 90s uh, when ENY decided to invest in, in India and open an uh, outsourcing and offshoring facility in India. So I was in, based in Chennai. Um, I was, uh, I was uh, uh, in the process of setting up my own house. I was also in the process of uh, starting the organization. Um, so there was a lot of funds transfer that we had to do from the US to, to India for, so that I could buy various equipment, various, uh, uh, various furniture that we were looking for, for the office and so on and so forth. So in order to do the funds transfer, it was very important that uh, we had a bank account in, in, uh, in India. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I spoke to the individual that I was dealing with in India in Chennai and, and said, hey, I need to open a bank account. What do we need to do? How do we uh, open a bank account uh, in, in a local bank, which will allow me to transfer money from the US to, to India? Mm -hmm. And he said, well, no, today we cannot open a bank account. Today is Tuesday and you cannot open a bank account. And I said, why? What, what's, what's wrong with uh, opening a bank account? And it, it, it was a cultural difference between myself and him, mm -hmm. which I did not at that very instant understand very clearly. He, his point was that you don't start anything brand new uh, on a Tuesday. Uh, you, should, you should wait till tomorrow. We will open a bank account tomorrow. <laughs> it, 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 so understanding now this affects the business and, and this was stopping me from transferring money. Mm -hmm. um, so eventually uh, we went the next day and, and opened the bank account. We opened it in Citibank and so on and so forth. But at that very instant, when he and I were having a conversation, I just could not understand the cultural differences. So, so working in a global environment, I, here I am trying to transfer money. I'm trying to open a, uh, operations in, uh, in India. And, and me having to understand what the cultural differences are. Right, wrong, or otherwise, these are cultural differences. I, I, I'm not here to argue about, about them. Mm -hmm. what, I'm, what I'm trying to focus on is to be able to understand uh, the, the difference and, and be able to empathize with it and, and understand it. So say for example, uh, just a few months back, uh, we were uh, uh, bidding on a very large uh, piece of work uh, where we had to run a mining operations 24 by 7 across the globe. Um, having, having technology uh, services providers providing services to various parts of the globe uh, at various time zones and, and making sure that as the services uh, and the demand for the services goes up and down in various parts of the world as the, the people wake up and, and start utilizing the services, and some parts of the globe are going, going to bed and, and uh, those services are diminishing in those particular uh, regions of the globe. To make sure that the right resources with the right skills are available at the right time to the organization is a significant challenge. And, and in order to make sure uh, that the right resources are available, you have to figure out and understand what the resources are looking for in that particular region. So you get the best resources and the highly technical and, and capable resources. They don't wanna work in a night shift in any region of the world. It doesn't matter. Uh, the most experienced resources, the most qualified and the most uh, skilled resources always wanna work in uh, during a normal day hour. Oh, definitely. Um, so how do you figure out and how do you make sure that the right resources are available at the right time, even though you have to run an operation in a, in a global environment? You have to utilize the local uh, understanding, the local limitations, at the same time as, as applying your global requirements to the organization and to the operation. And that's something which is very important to, to be able to understand it 
and to be able to come up with solutions around it. Mm-hmm. I didn't even know about the Tuesday thing, to be honest. That, that's fascinating to me. Yeah, it, it is. So I, I, and I, I think it, it's, a, it's a term that has been used by many organizations for many, many years. Uh, think globally, operate locally. But many, very few organizations actually utilize it and, and, and follow the spirit of it. Mm-hmm. And then that's something which is critical to, to understand it and follow the spirit of it as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I agree, I guess. I, I mean, yeah, I completely agree with you that no one really wants to work those extreme hours. So I guess that's why um, organizations are starting to uh, deploy uh, tools like chatbots, for example, so that at least while there might not necessarily be someone on the other end, at least something is there to comfort the customer, regardless of time, right? It, that, as well as, um, as well as the same kinds of, um, so today, in today's day and age, uh, technology, availability of technology across the globe is not an issue. So you, you can get uh, whichever Microsoft products that you require in the US, you'll get it in, in India, you'll get it in China, you'll get it in Sub-Saharan Africa as well. It doesn't matter. Uh, the same uh, 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 tools for chatbot or WhatsApp and, and any kind of other tools, technology tools that you require, they are readily available. But as you work and, 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 and utilize those and implement them in a global environment, making sure that the limitations of those areas are taken into effect that is something which is critical. So understanding the local limitations, whether they are technology limitations or whether they are uh, operational limitations, understanding those kind of things is very critical as well. Definitely. I completely agree with you, Carl, which kind of um, leads me to my next question. So how do you go about planning and implementing a five-year organizational transformation strategy, keeping these new technologies in mind and keeping the um, the fact that we have to localize it in mind? So uh, my answer, honestly, and, and my thinking has evolved in uh, just in these past six, eight months or so. My answer would have been very different if, uh, uh, if, if you would have asked me in, uh, say, for example, January or February of 2020 as to uh, how, uh, how, do, how do organizations go about planning a five-year a transformation strategy. And I, I think that would have been a normal thing. People would be going through a long-term kind of planning strategy and, and roadmap and so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. But, you know, COVID has changed that uh, and, and changed the speed at which we move in the business world significantly. Mm-hmm. Uh, the world and, and, Sorry? The world was completely different from Jan to now. Yeah, and 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 in today, what what um, we as uh, as IT executives were looking at a two year plan and a three year plan. Uh, what we were doing in two years or three years now, we are doing it in days or weeks, literally. Mm-hmm. Uh, now it may not be the full solution; it doesn't matter. You may not be hundred percent on the cloud. Say, for example but your uh, essential services, say for example, have been moved to the cloud. So what I'm saying is that as you go about implementing a five-year strategy, I think first of all, one should now start looking at a much shorter term kind of strategies which are impactful and and quick wins and speed to market uh, because, uh, because the time horizon has and the demand and the speed at which we need to move and we are capable of moving as we've noticed and, and we've learned through the COVID experience that what we were doing in months and years, now we technically are doing it in days and weeks. So I think that is something which is very important. Um, and, and, the, and what's important also from a, from a transformation strategy, what, what are the components of a transformation strategy is to, to first to understand uh, what you what you are doing well and and continue to do those things well and 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 improve upon them, but also understand the challenges that one is facing, and in order to 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 make those kind of improvements, I kind of see it as as climbing Mount Everest. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you are if you if if the task is to climb Mount Everest, how do you climb Mount Everest? You do all kinds of planning and you do all kinds of uh, 
uh, financial analysis on whether you have the money to do it and whether you have a team to do it and whether you have the right people who will help you out to do it and so on and so forth. But Mount Everest cannot be climbed without taking the first step. Right. So you have to take the first step. It does not matter how good your plan is. It does not matter how much money you've got to, in order to invest in that great endeavor and so on and so forth. The first step is important. And the second step is important. And the third step is important. And every step after that is important. So, so it's, it's the progress. You may get lost in between and you might have to change uh, your, uh, your uh, uh, process at, that, at, the, uh, at a certain point. Or you may have made a, a decision which may not have been the most optimum decision, but you may have to change your route. But yet, you have to continue to take that step. You have to continue to make, keep on moving. So, so every organization, a five-year plan or a two-year plan or a two-week plan requires that, that rigor to say, you know what, I'm just going to keep on moving forward. You keep on moving forward and, and keep on doing it. I really like the... Um... Everest analogy, those, that really puts things into perspective. It's all about taking that first step and it's all about um, those baby steps that you have to take. I, I, I listened to a, a, a lecture a few years back and uh, uh, there, was, there was this lady who, who talked about climbing Mount Everest and, and that, was, uh, that was her example. She said, when you are in that, in that rarefied air and, and you cannot breathe and you need oxygen supply, uh, each step is a Herculean task, mm -hmm. but you have to take it. And, and uh, I see that in life as well and in, in, in technology and, and, and business as well. As many a tasks are, a step is a simple thing to do from a human perspective, but, uh, but when you have challenges and when you have adver adversity sitting in front of you, yet you have to take that step, that is important. Yes, definitely. So, um... How can we design uh, the digital and IT transformation roadmap for an enterprise? Instead of a five-year plan, how about the roadmap for um, IT transformation? What are the most crucial elements that drive this transformation? So uh, I've done a lot of transformations in, in my career. Um, the last one was with Caesars Entertainment. It was a very complex uh, transformation. A digital transformation and an operational transformation, which is where the, not only just the technology of the organization was was changed and improved, but we also um, improved upon the organization, uh, the way the organization was structured, but the way the processes uh, were implemented within the organization as well. But it didn't start off, uh, that entire initiative did not start off with uh, just assuming that we are going to be doing a transformation. That entire uh, initiative started off with a clear uh, understanding and assessing the, uh, the operational health and the maturity of the organization. As I said earlier on, uh, what were the kind of things that we were doing well? What were the kind of things that we were not doing very well and being very, very honest and open about it? And how were we measuring what we were doing well or not performing very well, um, that we continue to measure and, and, and improve upon. And then the final thing is, uh, uh, how, do you, how do you make sure that you continue to improve upon and, and do a continuous kind of an improvement? So what we did was we, we, we assessed the organization and I was leading up that entire assessment and we found out that there were things that we were doing very well uh, from an organization perspective, but there were certain areas uh, that we, we were just not very good at. And how do you make sure that you improve the stuff that you are good at and then also improve uh, and then get benefits from the areas that you are not doing very well, but learn how to do it well. Mm -hmm. And I think having a very clear uh, view and an and idea about what success looks like so, so having that particular vision of what success looks like, uh, how will the organization operate in the future, and being able to uh, put it on paper, uh, describe it to various individuals, and, and be able to make sure that everything that is around uh, that particular vision is put into place. It, that's something which is very critical uh, to, to having that kind of vision and having that kind of visibility into the future 
and, and being able to clearly imagine what the future organization would look like. So here you have your challenges. Here you have the things that you are doing very well. You, you set processes and you set uh, implement uh, change within the organization, keeping in mind the, the, what the end goal looks like. Because if you, don't know, if you don't know what the future and the end goal is, and if you cannot env uh, envision it and visualize it, you will never know if you reached it or not, mm -hmm. if you're close to it or not. And, and in order to be able to create that kind of a roadmap, you need to understand the future vision. Definitely agree with you. So what, in your opinion, is the difference between the technology architecture in enterprises and in small and medium level organizations? So uh, it, it's a, uh, the, the key kind of role for any kind of transformation is the architect and the architecture uh, uh, organization, which is, which is focused on the architecture uh, of the organization. That, that's, that's, the, that's the key role. Uh, that uh, individual or that part of the organization which focuses on the technology architecture uh, provides, uh, provides the guidance to the organization on what the future architecture should look like. That particular role is very critical. That particular role decides um, and, and is kind of the evaluator and, and the arbitrator for where the direct, what the direction is for the organization and how the organization will continue to evolve um, and, and, and improve upon it. So it's a, uh, that particular role and that particular individual or individuals um, are, are individuals who are constant learners. They are, they are learning from uh, what today's technology is, what the legacy uh, technologies were, and how they have moved from one to the other. Um, they are also evaluating the pros and cons of the technology, but also pragmatic. And that is something which is very critical, to be pragmatic about uh, where you are uh, and, and, uh, and the solution that you are providing so that we do not provide solutions which are, uh, which are just fine the sky kind of solutions or a new shiny object uh, which we chase down unnecessarily and fo but rather focus on things which will really improve and, and move the needle as far as improvement from customer satisfaction is concerned for efficiency, mm -hmm. effectiveness of your processes and so on. That's something which is very important and, and, and a typical technology architect plays that very clear linchpin kind of a role. Mm -hmm. So what exactly defines like what, what differentiate, what kind of, how do I say this? What kind of differentiates the, or, the architecture or of a SME and an enterprise, like a well-established one? Is there, I mean, is the difference stark or is it like almost the same, but. Well, depending on the size of the organization and depending on the nature of the, of the work that one is doing and, and, and the organization is, is performing. Um, there are various levels of, of architects. The, uh, some of the architects are, are extremely se senior individuals who are, uh, who are focused on, on, uh, um, on certain aspects of, of the technology or providing direction for the entire enterprise. Um, and then there are startups, architects who are working in various startup organizations who understand their specific ecosystem, but it does not matter how uh, the, uh, the product integrates with other products. Uh, they are, that's not what they're focused on because they are, they are a services provider, which is very focused on a certain portion of the services, not the entire supply chain. So right. I think depending on where, who, what the organization is and where the, where the life cycle of, of the maturity of the organization is, that's, it's important to have the kind of right architect and the uh, architectural skills to look at it from a service perspective, from an enterprise perspective, uh, from, uh, from cloud to on-prem, uh, to uh, infrastructure as a service or a platform as a service. So all kinds of concepts are put together uh, as, as an architect is making the decision um, on, on how he or she is gonna advise their organization to improve and, and to enhance their services. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. So um, are there any other thoughts you'd like to leave our audience with as a final note? 
Yeah, on a, on a final note, I, I, think, I think what's important is uh, as we come out from the COVID uh, situation and, and as markets start uh, flexing and, and opening up, I think what's going to be important, as I said earlier on as well, is one with speed to market and, and being able to transform and, and continue to transform uh, to a true digital uh, uh, technology environment. Mm -hmm. uh, but also focus on flexibility as well. So, yeah. so uh, the organization should be able to flex um, as demand continues to increase or uh, there is a slowdown in the business operations for whatever reason. Uh, the organization should be able to flex that up and down kind of movement as well. So, so with speed and with maturity of, of the digital transformations that are occurring, one should be able to flex as well as the operation requires, or be able to, uh, to, uh, to add resources to a certain area and reduce the focus on another area. So that kind of flexibility should, should be existing in an organization as well. And as I've seen in, in highly matured organizations which have utilized a transformation uh, opportunity to transform in, uh, and, and or are, are already on a journey to do that, uh, those are the organizations which I feel are more mature and are more capable of, of, uh, of flexing based upon the demand of the marketplace. And I think that's something which is important and then will continue to, to drive organizations. And the more matured organizations will be able to demonstrate that. And those are the one, those are the organizations which will be more successful and great organizations in the future. Definitely. It goes back to Everest. Of course, when you're climbing, there's so many factors that come into play. So it's important to be flexible. Otherwise, you're never going to reach the top, right? Absolutely. You have to, you have to take the turns uh, and, the, and the bends in, in, in the road and, and be able to deal with it and the bumps in the road and be able to deal with it. But keeping the goal in mind, keeping the, keeping the vision in mind always. Definitely. Well, it was great talking to you, Carl. Thank you so much for giving us your time. Your insights were really valuable, and I know our audience is really going to enjoy this interview. So we'll be back with a new episode with a brand new expert soon. So stay tuned and stick around, and we'll see you for the next one. Thank you so much again, Carl. Thank you very much, Aish. Appreciate it.